Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to try and start right on time because uh, maybe there are other places you want to visit in college or head on up Grafton Street or something like that, so I won't delay you. Uh, Catherine McCabe is my name. I'm assistant professor here in the School of Nursing in Midderfee, and um, I am a general nurse. I'm going to present um, the details of the undergraduate nursing degree program that we run here today. And if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Either you can put up your hands as I'm speaking or at the end, um, it's no problem. Um, if any of you decide to do nursing, by the way, and you know, you're successful in coming to Trinity College, this is where you're going to be on your first day. I have 250 of you sitting here. So. Okay, the School of Nursing in Midfrey, it actually is one of the biggest schools in Trinity College. We have, uh, I think probably engineering is, is the next biggest. Um, we're part of the Faculty of Health Sciences, and you can see there the four main schools. There's nursing in Midfrey, pharmacy, dentistry, and medicine. Um, <clears throat> and actually the Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences is Professor Mary McCarran. There's loads of seats here if you want to. I've only just started, you'll be tired standing there. Come on, make yourselves comfortable. Um, but the, the Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences is Professor Mary McCarran, and Mary McCarran is actually from School of Nursing in Midwifery, and we're delighted with that, and we're very proud. And she's um, actually the first female Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences, so that's a, another reason we're proud. Now, an overview of the programme. Um, I'm going to talk to you about what the programme looks like, the structure of it, why study at Trinity College. Come on in. Come on down here. Uh, opportunities for post-grad study at Trinity College um, and also about Trinity's reputation as a you know its international reputation and how that might benefit you as a graduate and also as a centre of excellence for healthcare education and research so we've got a lot to offer um, we are the biggest nursing school we also have uh, the most PhD nursing students than any other nursing school in Ireland um, so while you start off as an undergraduate here, we're very, very interested in keeping your career moving in nursing. Um, so th there's a lot that we can offer. But first of all, let's get to the important part, and that is the facilities and the city centre location, five minutes from campus. And I mean, I'm sure you've realised that now, you've walked over from campus. It's, um, now most of the lectures take place here or in... St. James's Hospital, we have our clinical labs up there, so you'd have quite a lot of time up there. Um, but, you know, city centre, you know, easy access no matter where you want to go in Ireland. Um, the teaching facilities are excellent and the technologies that we use, they're all top of the range. Um, and I did mention the labs up in um, St. James's Hospital, they're fantastic. They're just simulated wards, for those of you who don't know what I mean. So it's like walking onto a ward. Um, and you know that uh, program Love Hate? Whenever they're in hospital, it's actually our clinical skills labs up in James's. They film up there. So they do. And I think they go to hospital a lot in that program. I've never watched it, but, um, so. but it is quite realistic. And um, you know, you'll learn all the, you know, the basic skills and you'll build on those in each year. So it's not just in first year you'll be in those labs, it's, it's every year of the degree program building on those right up to things like high dependency nursing care. Um, and and you, get a, you get a good opportunity to practice those skills before you go out into practice. So it's kind of comforting to know that the, that's there. And there's a lot of people up there to help you. Clinical skills tutors, they're called. Uh, the largest school of nursing in Midwifery in Ireland. There's our total student numbers, 1,311. You can see their undergraduate with 1,031. And those numbers are fairly stable because our, our, we get a quota, so it doesn't change on a yearly basis. Postgraduate higher diploma, 234, and postgraduate research, 46. And you can see there are staff numbers with academic and teaching staff with 81. And then support staff would be 30. Now, the support staff are extremely important uh, for students. They're our administration staff, and they keep everything ticking in the background. So, if, you know, you, usually if, if a student has a query, they, they'll contact the executive officer or the administrative support first and foremost. Um, 
So while they seem to be fewer in number, they're very much an important part of the team. Okay, you get a professional honours degree. So it's a four-year programme, which means it's an honours degree um, in general or psychiatric or children's in general or intellectual disability. There's seats down here if you'd like to come down. You can stay up there if you like, you know, but there's some here. Um, psychiatric nursing is now called mental health nursing, though. Um, so I don't know if, if any of you have a particular interest in, in any of those um, strands. They're all, they all come under the umbrella of the BSc CUR. That's the name of the degree program. But um, I mean, you, you'd probably want to think about which one you want to do, uh, which one you have experience in or a uh, particular interest in. Um, the general and the children's program is an integrated program. It's a 4.5 year program. But you come out with two, um, two registrations, one in general nursing and one in children's. Um, so it's a tough course, you know, so, so you're doing two and one, so you don't have that much time off. Um, our partnership, and we work really closely cause it, with um, the clinical services, uh, service user groups, so any of the, the patient advocate groups, all the hospitals, um, and, and actually a lot of community placements as well. So it's not just Trinity working in isolation. Everything we do, it's in discussion with the hospitals and community placements. And it is kind of unusual when you're a, you know, when you're a student in the health sciences faculty, because quite a lot of your time would be outside of here. You, you'll be here for one semester, but gone for the next. So for one semester, you're a, you're a Trinity student. And then for the next semester, you become a, a St. James's or a Tala student. So it's, it's it takes a bit of getting used to, but you certainly start to identify with the hospital that you're working with. Um, and then you step back in here and you're back being a Trinity student again. So it's quite, it's quite an unusual experience. But it's the same for all professional courses, all health sciences students. They all experience that same kind of moving around that perhaps <laughs> students doing an arts degree wouldn't have. The other thing that you will notice with a nursing degree program or any of the Faculty of Health Sciences programs is the timetables are full. You would tend to be in class a lot more, say, than an arts degree. They would have a lot more time off doing other type of work. But you would be in class a lot more because you have to meet statutory requirements for the nursing board, so you'd have to attend. Now, the services that we're directly involved in is Tala Hospital. Um, that was formerly known as the Adelaide and Meath, but it has actually changed its name now to Tala Hospital. And then the St. James's Hospital, HSE Mid Leinster, that's for the uh, mental health nursing students. St. Patrick's University Hospital, that's for mental health students. Uh, Stuart's and Monast Revan, they're for um, um, intellectual disability. Okay. Now the program structure, it is a modular program. And you can see there we have shared components. Now remember I said to you on the first day, it'd all be here together. There would be 250 plus because um, we would have everybody doing mental health, general, children's, ID would all be here. And they're for the shared components of the program. So you'd have quite a lot of those. I'd say maybe four to five of your modules in first year is shared. So you're all sitting in here together. And then you might start to branch out a bit more into the discipline specific modules. Okay, and you, for each module you have, you have um, an assignment attached to that. That's how it's, it's assessed. So, uh, say over the year, you might have some exams at Christmas. You'll certainly have some at the end of the year, but not that many, because some modules are assessed using uh, an essay or something like that. So it's not like you have a big chunk of exams at Christmas and another big chunk at, at the annuals. We actually try to keep those to a minimum. Uh, the, the major subjects are nursing, biological sciences, psychology and sociology, and then there's the clinical placements and internship. Now, clinical placements and internships, they are regarded as an exam. So each placement you do, you have to pass it. And if you don't, it's like failing an exam, and if you have to repeat it, you have to pay an exam fee. So it's very much it, it, it's on an equal footing with the academic side of things, the clinical input. 
Um, each year of the programme, yeah, you've got a mixture of blocks of theory and clinical placement. Um, and I think in first year, certainly, you, you don't go on clinical placement until after Christmas. Okay. And that can sometimes be a bit difficult for students who aren't entirely sure if nursing is what they want to do. Um, so, uh, but I mean, it's still time for students, you know, to make up their minds and change programs if they need to. So some of you thinking you're not sure if it, you want to do nursing, maybe some of you have some experience of hospitals, um, but the reality of working on a ward can be a little bit, you know, it's not what people expect sometimes. You know, but you, you don't get that experience until January, so just be aware of that. So I would advise any of you, if you can get a hospital experience before starting, do take it and, and see what you think. Now the course outcomes, you get a professional honours degree in nursing from Trinity College. And you can also register as a nurse on the relevant division. So for example, if you're doing general nursing, you can only register as a general nurse on the nursing board register or whether it's mental health or ID. Okay. And you can only do that when you have passed your final exams and all your clinical placements. Okay, the kind of teaching methods we use, well you have you know, people like me coming in here and putting up PowerPoint slides. That's one method that we use, especially for the large groups. And, and actually, you know, I've, I've heard students talking about how difficult it is when they start college to meet people in large groups like this. Um, because you're sitting beside some people one day and you're chatting away to them and the next day you don't know where they are in the room. So it is kind of hard to meet people. Um, and, and one of the things that we do, and I think we do it quite well here, is we have small group teaching. And you're put in a tutorial group in year one and you stay in that tutorial group. So you actually get to know people in that group and there's only about 18 people in it. So it gives you a chance to, to meet other people and get to know other people. Um, because it's, it's, it is hard, you know, being part of a very large group for the first year, especially, you know, if you have travelled to Dublin and you don't know any other people in Dublin or you don't know other people in the class. So it's a little bit daunting. So the way we teach, it's not all big lectures. And very quickly, you start getting into these small groups. So you do get to meet people and get to know people quite quickly. Um, the clinical skills training, that's very much simulated work. So you, pr you practice on pretend patients, you practice on each other, taking blood pressures, temperatures, um, bed bathing, all kinds of things. But that's very much a practical endeavor, so um, you, know, it's, you have to work a bit hard on those days. And you also have to, your mandatory skills, for example, like um, lifting and moving, um, you would have CPR and hand washing, they're all mandatory skills. And then if you're doing mental health, there's um, behavioral challenges and communication that you'd have to do as well. So the, there's, there's quite a lot of mandatory skills that you have to attend for. If you don't attend for those, there is a nominal charge if we have to set it up for you again. Um, and then there's the self-directed learning. And that is, that's great because you're regarded as adults and you know, you're, you're given the opportunity you know, to go and, and read up on the things that you're taught about in class. And you're given reading lists to help you with that. But it takes a little bit of practice to get into that. Because sometimes you can go to the library and you can get the books and you, you have a great day. But then you actually have to go home and read them and you know, sit down. And, and that's, that's kind of a learned behavior. You know? So it's, you, you come from Leave and Search, which is very different, most of you. So um, you give yourselves a bit of time to, to work up to that, to making yourselves work and setting up a you know, a system of learning. Because otherwise you might find yourself coming up to an exam and you really haven't a clue, you've left it too late. And that's another thing about college that's quite different um, from secondary school. Um, and the self-directed learning also involves you, you using the academic staff that are here <coughs> and contacting us. So if there's ever a problem, you know, if you're not getting your assignment done, if you're overwhelmed by it, you don't, don't sit at home thinking, oh, I'm too much trouble, or I won't want to bother anybody. You absolutely do. You get in touch with your lecturer and you tell them, and they'll help you. And that's, again, another feature of college life, not just for nursing, that you need to learn how to do. Seek the help that you need, and we're all here for that. Um, there is the problem solving, which is very important in nursing, because 
you are going to be out there. You are going to meet patients who are going to say something to you like, I don't feel well. You know, I've got chest pain or whatever. And you, you need to be able to work that through in your head quite quickly to solve that problem, to take the right action uh, for what's in the best interest of that patient. And that's quite demanding, and, and it's something that you might be put in that position sooner rather than later. So that could happen in first year, second year. Okay, so problem solving skills are very important. Um, your practice placements in year, in year one, two, and three, they are all either um, your supernumerary, okay, so which means you're not on the staff rota. That's all it means. You still contribute to everything that happens on the ward like you are a staff member. That's what supernumerary is. Okay? But you're observed and you're supervised all the time by a preceptor. Okay? So there's always somebody there with you. Okay? And then in a final year, you have your internship. An internship year is great. You know, when I talk to students before they start their internship year, they do not sleep for the week before because it's a mixture of anxiety and excitement. And then when you meet the students out there and they're, they're just so happy, they really step up, you know. It's great to be an, an internship student because you're, you're a nurse now. And you're still a student, so you have that protection and that support. And it's really great. It's great to see the students in internship year really come into their own. And first year students love working with the interns because they kind of look at the interns and go, God, you know, I'm going to be like that someday. Because when you're in first year, you think fourth year is never going to come. So by the time you get to fourth year, you're very much a role model for the first, second, and third years. Okay, assessments and examinations. We, we use quite a mixture. Um, we have a lot of the theories. We have a lot of um, uh, essays. Uh, MCQs, which is multiple choice questions. We'd use those a lot for biology, maybe psychology. Um, we have some written exams. As I said, we try to keep those to a minimum. Um, we have case presentations, uh, OSCEs. Now, the OSCEs would be very much based around the clinical skills labs, and you'd be given scenarios and you'd be examined on them. Okay, so there's quite a mix of things. And then when you're in clinical practice, you're assessed on a daily basis. Everything that you do and how you respond to the staff, nurses, and to your patients um, is recorded in your competency documents. Okay. And you're very much part of those documents. They're yours. You carry them with you. Nobody else looks after them, only you. So you know all the time how you're getting on. Now, support for students. Um, well, first of all, in practice, when, you, when you're out there, you have staff nurses, or if you do mid for your midwife, you have your preceptor. There's a clinical placement coordinator. Now, clinical placement coordinator is not on the ward all the time. They're based in nursing administration, but they're very much there for, to support students. So you would see a clinical placement coordinator every day. They would come to the ward, so you would see them. And then you have nursing and midwifery practice development. There are other members of staff that would support you. But, but the, the other person who's not on that is actually the ward manager, and they're very supportive of students. Again, if you're, if you're feeling overwhelmed or you don't feel that you're getting on the way you want to, it's always very good to talk to the ward manager. At school level here, there's the lecturers, module leaders, and course coordinators. And as I said earlier, there's also the administration staff, which are brilliant. They're really good and very helpful. And then in college, you have your college tutor. I don't know if you've heard about this system that Trinity runs. Every student is given the name of... Uh, a lecturer um, who becomes their tutor. Now, they may be their tutor for the whole duration of their degree program. Uh, I am a tutor for students doing um, the Bachelor in Social Studies. I have about 50 students, and I'm their tutor. So if they have any problem, if they need to repeat any exams, or they're worried about anything, they contact me. And you'll all be given the name of somebody like that. Um, student learning development. That's a really good support system in college. It's really good for helping you learn how to write writing skills. And, and if you're visiting other schools today in college, I'm sure they'll tell you about this as well. Uh, they offer a huge amount of online support, but also drop-in support. It's really good. Like, don't ever feel that you can't go somewhere to get the help that you need. Um, for those of you who think your writing skills aren't very good, they offer a really good structured program to help you. Um, 
Then there's disability services, student counselling, health service, there's chaplaincy, and then there's a mature student's office as well. And then there's financial supports. So there is quite a lot there. And then there's the library. It really doesn't look like that. Yeah, it's a funny picture to put up. It's actually very modern. <laughs> I think that might be the long room hub, but... Oh, yeah, it is. Actually, of course it is, yeah. Have any of you visited the long room? Okay, well, that, that is what it, it looks like. Um, it's an interesting place to see. But the library itself is very modern. Um, it's got every book you can imagine, and if it doesn't have it, it will get it for you. Um, and the staff are very helpful. And it's a good place to get comfortable in and get used to. Um, you know, especially if, you, you know, you know, if you're going to be in Dublin and you're sharing accommodation, you mightn't be able to study at home. And, you know, it's good to get to know the library and, and study there because it is quiet. Um, now, general nursing. Training as a general nurse gives the graduate the knowledge and skills to provide nursing care, and not just in hospitals, but also in community settings. And at the end of the course, you'll have all the knowledge and the skills you need to be able to do that from day one. Okay, so once you qualify from this program, you can work as a staff nurse on the ward. And you'll feel confident doing that because of the internship. Okay, so don't ever be concerned that you will feel out of your depth when you qualify. You won't. You'll have had some very good experiences up to that point as a staff nurse. Um, the kind of things that, that you'll be learning about are not just patients with acute, um, acute illnesses, but also the chronic illnesses, and that's becoming more and more prevalent. And you'll be learning a, a lot more in the future about how to look after patients in the community with chronic illnesses. A lot of care is moving from hospitals to the community. So if you decide to do nursing next year, you will see an even bigger emphasis on the programme on community care than there currently is. Um, there will be all the usual medical and surgical conditions. It's not all very dramatic. A lot of it is quite normal day-to-day -day, um, care of patients. It's not really like you see on television, um, although some of it is a little bit. But actually, it's, it's, you know, most of it is it's a lot quieter, it's a lot calmer, the work is. Um, and you get a lot of time to get to know your patients and look after them in the way that they want to be looked after and need to be looked after. And the degree program emphasizes the development of professional competence, caring, communication, and understanding of the patient's needs. And they're kind of demanding requests. You know, if you, you know, for somebody who's just left school, you know, to get all these skills of being competent, caring, and communication, you build those up over the four years. And one, uh, one thing I think is always good to do is look at other staff nurses and pick a really good role model. And if you decide to do nursing, I think that's a very important thing to do. Pick a really good role model. Now, psychiatric nursing or mental health nursing. Um, these students, uh, they're educated to look after um, clients with acute or chronic mental health problems. And again, it's both in community settings and hospital settings, but actually it's more in the community. A lot of uh, care of patients with mental health problems takes place in the community. Um, the degree program emphasizes the development of, again, professional competence, caring, communication, and understanding individual client needs. Approximately one in four of the population experiences mental health problems, and that is growing. The objectives of psychiatric nursing are to facilitate the maximum development of mental health and, individual, and the individual to promote mental health. Um, and a major focus of the program is to facilitate and promote recovery so that people can live normal lives in the community and actually have productive lives. Intellectual disability nursing. Again, these, these nurses are, I suppose most of the care would be in the, not in acute care settings, but in residential care settings. And more and more perhaps in the community as well in houses, but that's only starting to happen with intellectual disability. This program uh, equips the graduate with the knowledge and skills to provide stimulation, practical support, and nursing care for persons with intellectual disability. A very strong component to this program is education 
and support of people with intellectual disabilities. It is quite a different um, type of nursing. Nurses who work with persons with intellectual disability have a diversity of roles. It's intensive physical nursing, but it's also a supportive and guidance role. And you can see, I mean, a, lo a lot of what a, 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 an intellectual disability nurse would, would do is very much community-based. Um, so it's, it's, it's quite different. I don't know if any of you are thinking of, of doing that type of nursing. Uh, but again, look into it as much as you can beforehand because it's not the same as general um, or mental health where there is some more overlap. It is quite different. Now, children in general, as I said to you, this again is it's to do with acute and chronic illness of children, but also adults. The courses run parallel over four and a half years. And again, it's about competence, caring, communication, and understanding the children's needs, the adults' needs, but also the family is very much involved with children as well. So it's quite a demanding um, program. And again, if you're thinking of doing that, just so you know, it is demanding. And when I say demanding, I mean demanding in time. Time, because you, you're in class more. You, your summers are shorter, because it is a 4.5 year. You have to fit in two degrees, basically. Um, yeah, I've just said that, 4.5 years, okay. But you do get to register on both, so you're that little bit more mobile. Now, the awards and prizes, we have hospital prizes, there's the school gold medal book prizes, so there's quite a lot of prizes we give out every year. Um, there's the uh, college scholar, so our second years and our third years are eligible to do a scholar's exam, and if they're successful in that, they can actually have free fees and... If they go on to do postgrad, it's free fees, everything's free, and you can get accommodation here on campus. Um, but again, that is a challenging exam. But we've had quite a lot of success in this school with the Skulls over the last few years. Um, and then there's the national awards, and we've had some success in the last couple of years, years as well with the national undergraduate awards. So now, why study nursing? Um, is nursing a good choice to make? Is it a rewarding professional choice? Facilitates international travel, provides you with a wide range of skills and knowledge, and offers a wide and diverse pathway for the future. I, you know, you can pick any of those. Um, you know, nursing is a great, it is a great career. Um, but it's not, a, it's not for everybody. And just so you know that, if you know, think about why you want to do it. Um, and it is good for travel. It will help you travel. Uh, it'll help you do a lot, it, you know, especially in Irish qualification. Um, but do think about why you want to be a nurse. You know, sometimes we get students coming here because they, they want to do nurse, they want to do some other, uh, they want to do physiotherapy or maybe medicine. But actually, that's a harder way to get into it. If you do nursing, then you have to start all over again with physiotherapy. You can't transfer. The other thing you should know is with the... Um, with the specialties, if you want to do general nursing, but you don't get it, you get mental health nursing or you get ID, you can't, you can't transfer unless you've got the points. And if you decide, yes, I'm going to do mental health nursing and you complete the degree, and then you think, I want to do general nursing, you have to start again and do the four year. We, there is no, currently, there is no post registration degree in Ireland. So for example, if you have done your mental health and you want to do general, you can't do an 18 month course to pick, bring you up to a general qualification you have to go back and start again. Why is that? It's just, we used to be able to do it. Yeah, it's, just, it's gone uh, with the, when the degree was introduced. I know DCU tried to introduce it for um, psychiatric nursing a few years ago and they ran a pilot, but the, it wasn't funded the government wouldn't fund it. It's very unusual, uh, so it is. Yeah, most do, yeah. Um, I, I would imagine that situation can't last, and I know a lot of the universities are poised to run post-reg. We'd be very happy to do it, um, but it's, it's a difficult, and I, I think it's something you should consider when you're making your choice. Okay. Um, but it is a fantastic career, 
I, um, I did my nursing in Galway and uh, I am from Wicklow and I moved to Galway and I hated it so much I didn't unpack my suitcase for a month and um, I didn't really want to do nursing. You know, I just needed to leave home, you know, sort of thing. And I, I did do the nursing and for first year and second year, it was a bit of a struggle, you know. Um, we used to have to go to mass in the morning, you know, in Galway. And uh, I'm not that old, but we did. And we had to live in the nursing, nurse's home. And uh, all you could have was your bed and one holy picture. And um, yeah, I know, but we had really good fun. Now I only had to live in for six months, but um, you know, by the time third year came, it was only a three year program at the time. By the time third year came, um, you just, I really liked it. And what I really liked about third year was the responsibility I got. I wasn't a first year or second year anymore. You know, I was a third year. <coughs> and they start giving you the patient patients to look after and you, you get that responsibility and you become a nurse and then I qualified and like a lot of people now there were no jobs so I went to England and it was just brilliant so if there are no jobs for you don't worry and you find that you have to travel it's fine you can travel with nursing and the experience that you get abroad and that you bring back is invaluable to you so it isn't necessarily an easy degree but you meet great friends you meet great people. You get to look after a lot of people. And you should be privileged to do that. And if you're never sure about what kind of nurse you want to be or, you know, or what a nurse is, just think about when you're sick in bed and how, how you'd like somebody to look after you. And, and that's really what a nurse does. Okay? Now, Pathways for the Future. You know, there's hospital and community-based choices, and it's becoming more and more uh, flexible. So sometimes you can actually do both, especially if you're a clinical nurse specialist. You can work in community and hospital. Then there's educational pathways, which is the one I took. Then there's administration and management pathways, research, and then there's policy formation. And that means working at government level. And we need more and more of that in nursing. Opportunities for postgrad. We have a range of postgrad clinical courses and what's really interesting for us is that we're seeing of all of our degree students coming back now some of them come straight back to our master's programs and then on to PhD so it's great I mean at our recent awards uh, last week uh, one of the first degree students that I had was receiving an award and she's a clinical nurse specialist now so it's really great to see students coming back um, Opportunities to undertake postgrad research training at master's and PhD level, and there's loads of support for that. So remember, it doesn't stop with just the nursing degree. There's plenty of opportunities. And it's not just within nursing. We find nurses are working more and more with the other disciplines. So it would be nurses working with physiotherapists, OTs, medicine, pharmacy. So there's a lot more of that going on. Now, points for entry. You may be interested in this. Um, they were slightly higher in 2012 as a result, result of the extra points for honours maths. Um, and you can see there, 430. Slight, the slight variations sometimes. But are they okay, do you think? It'll be all right, because they're going to be the same probably next year. They won't go down. Now, here's some testimonials. I'll read them for you. It's very small. Um... The, my wife had a baby girl on Wednesday night. For about 10 hours, she was in pre labor ward being cared for by a final year midwifery student. The care received was exemplary and of the highest standard, and I was very impressed by the attitude and skills. We're often quick to criticise nurses and midwives, not in this case. I'm complimenting a high calibre student. And then da the next one, just wanted to relay an experience to the School of Nursing that I had yesterday while attending with my son, I met with some very efficient and friendly student nurses. I'm delighted to say that these young students were TCD students who were on work experience placements. Um, and if these are the young people who are representing the School of Nursing, all I can say is that they do the School of Nursing in Trinity proud. I was quite preoccupied with my son as he had to undergo a general anaesthetic. 
but did manage to mentally record the names of the two nurses. Both of these young people were very engaging and helpful and very eager to put my son at ease. Another girl with whom um, I can't read that, met was a postgrad student and she was in the recovery ward. She was fantastic uh, with my son when he came back from theatre and made sure that we'd all of the appropriate information we had needed before discharge. This, sometimes we, we get random messages coming into us about students that the public meet and um, this is we, we actually haven't had any bad ones, um, but that's about being professional and uh, how the public perceive you. Um, and, you know, we, we get some very positive comments. So do come and join us in 2013. Okay. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them. The question here is, how many places do we have? And um, we have, for first years, usually uh, 250. 250, but that is shared between general mental health, um, ID. Yeah, yeah, we get, yes, we have about 150 for general. Yeah. <laughs>